Hey guys, in this video we'll be talking about the brand new productions panel inside of Premiere Pro version 14.1. Productions are an evolution of shared projects with a lot of new advantages. While productions were primarily created for teams of people working on projects at the same time, there are definitely advantages even if you work alone. Just to be clear, this is not replacing the single project files that you're used to working with, which are the .prproj files. Productions are basically just an evolution of that. So let's dive right in and take a look at how this works. First, in order to set up a production for the first time, come to the Premiere Pro welcome screen and come up to File, New, Production. Once you do this, it will ask you what you want to name the production as well as where you want to save it. Once you choose this location, do not rename or move the production folder. We'll cover that more in just a minute. Once a production is created, Premiere Pro will open and you'll want to take notice of this panel over here on the left. If for some reason you don't have this, you can come up to Window, Production. This is called your production panel and it's where all of your .prproj files are stored. Let's take a side-by-side -side look at a difference between a single project and a production project. Traditionally, a single .prproj file has bins and then media inside of those bins. In a production, you have folders and inside of those folders you have your .prproj files otherwise known as your Premiere Pro project file. A production can contain as many .prproj files as you would like. With productions, you have to start thinking about things slightly differently. So the biggest thing to note here is that a production holds Premiere Pro project files. The basic example that Adobe gives is that you could have a Premiere Pro project file in your production that only has your media in it. Then you could have a second project file in the production that only holds the timelines that you cut on. So I've set up this exact example here. I can double click on the project files and this will open them up. Now I can drag over my media from the media project file onto my timeline in my timeline project. Now you might be asking, well what's so special about this? Well take note of the project panels. The media wasn't duplicated into the timeline project. In a traditional Premiere Pro project, if you have two projects open and drag media into another project, Premiere has to import that media into the other project. This can result in tons of duplicated clips for some workflows. What a production does is it just references that one project file for all of the media inside of it. So there's no duplicating files between projects when I use media from one project inside of another. Everything is just a reference to another project file. So to illustrate this point a little bit further, in your production, you could create multiple project files, ones for only graphics, sound effects, music, media, and so on. Now whenever you take assets from these project files and put them onto one of your timelines, they are just being referenced by that timeline project and not duplicated everywhere. Another huge advantage to this workflow is that Premiere will only use system resources for projects that are opening your production. This means that if you were to split up large assets like media, sound effects, graphics, and everything else into their own individual projects, Premiere doesn't have to load all of them when you open the production. It will only use system resources for the projects that are open. As an example, for example, a few years ago I created a documentary that was about 8 terabyte in size. I had tons of external audio, sound effects, music, media, pictures, and so on. Every time I loaded up this project, I was waiting several minutes for all 8 terabyte of media to load into the project. If productions had existed, I could have broke up all of my subjects from the documentary into their own project files. This would mean that if I had opened the production, everything would load blazing fast because it only has to load the media from the project files that I opened. So if I only wanted to work with one specific specific character from my documentary, in the past I would have to load all 8 terabytes of media. With productions, I could open up the project file for that one character and only load a few hundred gigabytes worth of media instead. This is a huge improvement for large projects. In the past, a single Premiere Pro project file with this much media can become really bloated and start to cause a lot of issues, and I experienced this firsthand. Productions allow you to house all of your separate project files in one place and make everything faster and easier to access. Now that you have a general idea of how productions work, let's go back to when we created our first production. Once a production is created, it automatically generates a single project file inside of it for you. If you want to migrate existing projects into a production, you can right click inside the panel and click add project to production. While you can drag and drop project files into the production in the finder or explorer, Adobe doesn't recommend doing this. If you import using the method I just mentioned, Premiere can handle a lot of special cases for you. So make sure to import in the production panel. As an example, one of those special cases is if you ever want to duplicate a project file 
absolutely make sure to do that inside of the production panel. Doing this in the finder will result in two project files that have the same project ID and Premiere will throw an error and a text file telling you which files are identical and to get rid of one of them. If you duplicate inside of the production panel, Premiere will ensure that they have separate IDs and that you don't have issues. If you make a change inside of the production panel, those changes will also be reflected in the finder or explorer. While you manage your productions, renaming, moving, or deleting files should always be done from this panel. As a quick example, if you were to modify the name of the production folder in the finder, Premiere will no longer recognize it as a production anymore. If you open Premiere, there will be no recent production file, and if you go to open production, the one you had previously named won't be in the list. If you made the mistake of moving or renaming this folder, you can click on browse and then find the main production folder and click open. This will reconvert that folder and everything into it into a production. You will also need to do this if you are opening the production for the first time on a new computer. If you look inside of your production folder, you'll notice that there is a prod set file. Do not touch, move, or rename this file because it will cause issues if you do. There is no reason to touch this file. If you ever want to open a production after it has been created, you can either do it from the Premiere Pro welcome screen or you can open any .prproj file that is a part of your production and it will open the production as well as the project file. So basically, you can still open a production just like you would with a single project in the past. Also, make sure that inside of your folder that houses the prod set file that you only store .prproj files in there. This is not meant to contain any other type of media except for the .prproj files. So as a basic organizing structure, I would recommend creating folders outside of this one, such as footage, graphics, audio, and so on. Then at the top, you have your production folder, which houses all of the .prproj files. All right, so that was a lot of information about just the start of working with a production. But to sum it all up, do all of your renaming, duplicating, trashing, and moving of project files in the production panel and not in the finder. If you do this, you should be totally fine. Lastly, you can only have one production open at a time. You cannot have multiple open. Once you are finally inside of your production, things should feel pretty familiar. When you open a project file, you have your production panel, which will tell you which projects are actively open and being used. If a project has a green pen next to it, this means you have it open and you are allowed to read and write from this project. If a project has a gray outline, this means that the project is not open or using system resources. If a project has a red lock icon next to it, this means that someone else is working on this project file and you only have read access. If you look to the right, you can see the name of the person working on this project. With read access, you can still view the timeline, export media, as well as copy media from that timeline to another project that you have read and write access to. If you see a yellow triangle next to a project, this means that someone else has made changes to the project and you need to refresh in order to see those changes. You can do this by going up to file, refresh all projects, or you can set up a keyboard shortcut. I'd recommend mapping this to a shortcut if you work with a team. There's also a new shortcut for save all, which if you are working in productions, I would highly recommend remapping command S or control S to save all. This will still act as a regular save in project files, but in a production, it will save all of your open projects. Now, if you're working with a team, you need to be working off some form of shared storage like a NAS. If you are working with teams, you need to configure a few settings before you can start. Make sure to do this on all of the machines that will be working in the team. First, go to preferences and then media and uncheck the following. Write XMP ID to files on export, write clip mark markers to XMP, and enable clip and XMP metadata linking. Then go to Preferences, Collaboration, and make sure that Enable Project Locking is checked. Then enter a username for yourself so that people can see who is working on the project. Finally, go to Window, Workspace, and uncheck Import Workspaces from Projects. This helps avoid having your workspaces changed when opening projects used by another editor. If you are using productions and you don't work in Teams, then you don't need to worry about changing any of those settings. These are specifically for editors all working from a single shared storage device. Now here are some small details that you should be aware of when using productions. If you take a clip from one project and cut it into another project and then want to change the master clip effects, you need to make these changes in the original project that the clip exists in. So for example, if we have our media project and the timeline project example, you cannot change the master clip effect of the clip in the timeline project. You need to click reveal in project and then double click to open the clip in 
in the source monitor. Now, if you go back to the effects control panel and master effects, you will be able to modify these settings here. Now, if you're working with a remote editor with productions, you may want to be aware of this workflow. Remember that when working in a production, project files are only referencing another project file if you share media between them. It is not copying or duplicating media into your project files. In fact, productions will never copy or duplicate media between projects. That is one of the biggest perks of using a production. It's all links that are referencing each other. So what if you wanted to send a remote editor with the same production file one of your timelines? Well, if you're working on a project file that is referencing five other projects, this means that you would need to send them all five project files for them to be able to work on it. This would be a huge pain, but thankfully Adobe added a great feature for us to solve this issue. You can highlight all of the clips in the sequence that you would need to send someone and click generate master clips for your media. What this will do is tell Premiere that all of the links to those media now belong to this project. So instead of your current project file referencing all of the other ones, all of the links are now pointing to this one specific project file. You can always undo this with a command Z if you don't want to do that. Now all you should have to do is send your remote editor that one project file and everything should link up on their system just fine, assuming that all of their media is located in the same file structure that you were using on your computer. Now remember, this is for remote editors who are working with identical media on each of their own local drives. When you generate master clip effects, it is not sending them any actual media. It's just saying, hey, all the links to these files that were being given to me through the project files, I want all of those links being directly pointed to me now. That way you can send one project file instead of multiple. Once you send your editor the file, all they have to do is click add project to production and Premiere will automatically copy the file from where it was into your production. Remember to always manage your projects from the production panel. Productions benefit people working in teams the most, but if you're a solo editor, there are definitely perks to using productions as well. I run an online course teaching people how to edit faster in Premiere Pro Prior to productions, I had separate project files for every project I created because I learned that eventually one single project file would become extremely bogged down as time went on. Now with productions, I can have all of my course videos in one production. This allows me to reuse clips from each project and have an easy place to work on multiple projects at once. Same story goes for my documentary like I mentioned earlier. I was the only person working on it and had productions existed, my entire workflow could have been so much smoother. So productions can definitely benefit solo editors as well. So there you guys have it. That's an in-depth look at the new productions panel inside of Premiere Pro 2020. I'll also link to Adobe's PDF about productions in the description if you want to read more. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to let me know.